everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be bringing you a book haul. I've got a few books to talk to you about today, some that were very kindly sent to me and some that I picked up for myself. I am so excited for all of the books in this haul. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for every book that comes into my life, but a lot of the books in this haul in particular, I am so buzzing to get to. I'm gonna start with the fiction, then move to non-fiction, and then into poetry. Um, and the first fiction book I have to talk to you about is a classic. This is Melmoth the Wanderer by Charles Ma Maturin. Maturin, I'm not sure how you pronounce this author's surname. Um, but you may be aware that I collect these um, editions of classics. These are the Penguin English Library books that are designed by Coralie Bickford Smith and I've got quite a few of these now. I spotted this one in a second-hand bookstore and I always get so excited when I see these books out in the wild. It's not in perfect condition but that's not something that I'm particularly bothered about but I did need to give it like a wash. Um, and I used to work in a secondhand bookstore and sometimes we would get books in that were quite grubby and we'd just give them a little wash. I don't really understand why that wasn't done before this was put on the shelf and I had to do it, but whatever. I just feel like that could really put someone off buying a book and that's not fair on the book. But anyways, this is a 19th century gothic novel and it is about a man who makes some sort of deal to like sell his soul to Satan. That's the only vague idea I have about what this book is about, but it's an intriguing one nonetheless and I'm very excited to add it to my Penguin English Library collection. The next fiction book has some spooky goings on as well and that is Perfectly Preventable Deaths by Deirdre Sullivan. This one is a proof um, and it's published by Hotkey Books but I think it's already out. Yeah it was published on the 13th of June and this is a book that sounds so up my street. This is a YA book about witches so I'm already intrigued by that but it's also about twins and it's set in Ireland. It's about a pair of 15 year old twins who move to quite a rural Irish town which is a place that is known for in the past 60 years teenage girls have gone missing. I believe some dangerous going as on start to happen and one of the twins becomes particularly intrigued by witchcraft. I read Deirdre Sullivan's uh, short story collection of fairy tale retellings Tangleweed and Brine. I read that for the Irish Readathon or it might have been the month before the Irish Readathon. I read it this year anyway and I absolutely loved it so I'm really excited to read a full-length novel from her. The next and final work of fiction I have in this haul is The Football Factory by John King. I have decided that I want to read more books about football. I'm a little bit football obsessed and it's kind of the only fraction of my life that isn't related to books in some way which you think would be a welcome relief but no I'm gonna combine the two. This was published in the 1990s by Vintage and is basically a look at um, the culture of like the football hooligan and like racism and sexism within football. Quite a short one as well and I'm really intrigued by it and I hope this will spark me reading a whole bunch of books about football. Which does lead us quite nicely to my first non-fiction book. Uh, this is No Win Race by Derek A. Bardowell. This is published by Mudlark and it came out on the 16th of May and I think it goes quite well with The Football Factory so I might read them quite close together. The book looks at race Racism within sports, not just in football, but across the board. I'm very excited to read this one. Next up, I have The To-Do List and Other Debacles, Lessons in Life, Love and Losing My Mind by Amy Jones. This comes out on the 4th of July from Ebury. The author of this book used to write for The Pool and I'm pretty sure I've read quite a few of her articles. Um, so I was really intrigued by this proof. Basically a non-fiction book about like 20-something and 30-something womanhood in relation to like work, friendships, relationships, that kind of thing. I honestly just can't get enough of books like this. Like I feel like I've read a lot of books like this over the years but I think every one of them brings a slightly different perspective and there's always something that I can take from them that changes my life in some way. So I'm really intrigued to see what Amy has to say in this book. Next, I have two books about vaginas. It is More Orgasms Please, Why Female Pleasure Matters by The Hotbed Collective. Um, this began life as a podcast. I've not listened to that podcast yet, but it's definitely going on my list now because this is so fascinating to me. This is basically a book that really advocates for orgasms. It's about feminist porn, body image, menopause. It looks at why there is not only a pay gap between men and women, but also an orgasm gap. 
was this book made for me? <laughs> my next vag book is Vagina, A Re-Education by Lynn Enright. This is published by Alan and Unwin. This book provides a lot of information that has kind of been deemed as um, like taboo or embarrassing. Things that so many people with vaginas experience that we kind of just don't talk about. From things as simple as being able to correctly name parts of our anatomy, medical conditions like endometriosis, to things like abortion, miscarriage, infertility, menopause, uh, masturbation, poverty, um, FGM, all that kind of stuff is in here. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Girl Up by Laura Bates, but a much more like grown-up version of that. I really love my vagina, so I would like to read as much about it as possible please. To finish up with, I have two poetry collections. We have The New Testaments by Jericho Brown. This is published by Picador Poetry. I've already read this one, so it will be in a wrap. This collection, the poet is essentially like subverting stuff from the Bible, and using that to address a gay experience, but also a black gay experience in particular. Personal, it's political, the poems are very well crafted, but I will talk about it more in my wrap up. And the final book I have to talk about today is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Richard Osmond. This is also from Picador Poetry. I've never read anything from this poet before, but I was totally struck when I found out what this collection was about. This collection is a collaged response to the poet's experience of a terrorist attack in London in June 2017. I'm sure this is going to be a really powerful collection that deals with some very difficult topics, but I really think poetry is one of the most fantastic mediums that we have to unpick and analyse and reflect on these really complex situations. So I'm really excited to see what the poet does with that subject matter. So this is it, these are all the books that I'm going to tell you about today. We've got football, vaginas, witches and poetry. Maybe that's why I was so excited for this book haul. I feel like it really encompasses me as a person. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if your interest has been piqued in any of them. As ever, all of the books that I've spoken about will be linked down below in the description if you want to find out more about them or get your hands on a copy. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video.